Hi, you guys. Welcome to the weekly bump. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the weekly energy update. Thank you guys so much for being here. We're going to talk about the stars a little bit and we're going to do a pick a card reading for you so you can kind of gauge the energy for the week. Um, but before we do that, I have a little announcement. I've been thinking a lot about my future and my channel was a big part of that. And I started to decide that I wanted to take more of an educational route with my channel and start sharing a lot of a lot more than what I have in the past and, and really passing on as much information as I learn um, for my subscribers. Um, I also wanted to stop doing like 12 individual videos for every single, like one video for every zodiac sign near the end of the month. Um, but instead, I'm going to just start lumping them all together in just one big, super long video. It will all be the same. Nothing's really changing. The format will be the same. The comprehensives will be the same. It's just, you'll just have to find the timestamp for the reading, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know on that. Keep your eyes open. I think my views are going to struggle a little bit with that this month, just as I, you know, I'm changing things up so drastically. But if you do want your monthly reading from me, just keep your eyes open for like an all signs video kind of thing okay so just wanted to keep you abreast of that stay tuned for more content okay now one of the things I wanted to do was to do a question and answer kind of video um, I put this up on my community tab a few weeks back I wanted to put it out there on the weekly bump and say hey if you have questions put a comment down below I probably won't get to every question but I'll try my best to answer as many as I can whether it's about astrology or tarot or me personally my my journey my path whatever um, or just what is it like to be a tarot reader like whatever you guys want and um, I'll try to put together a fun kind of Q&A video for that I thought that'd be kind of a fun thing to do okay that's it all my announcements all right let's go ahead and talk about these stars okay you guys these energies in the sky are kind of interesting but also really cool at the same time. Now, we talked a lot about what was happening last week. We had Mars, Saturn conjunct in Aquarius. We had Neptune and Mercury in Pisces. And we had Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn. Now, Mars is starting to come off of Saturn. It's getting more comfortable in its Aquarius energy. Mercury is coming off of Neptune and it's plowing forward toward Aries. Thank goodness. Um, Neptune, or Mercury has been in Pisces for quite a while. So I think we're all ready for it to like get the heck out of there and start being a little bit more productive. Now, Pluto and Jupiter, though, are still like right on top of each other in Capricorn at 24 degrees. So Jupiter has just moved just a few minutes past Pluto now, so we're coming off of it. But, you know, it kind of makes sense that with all these numbers coming out on the news of the cases and have people who have passed away from this virus, it makes sense that, um, you know, the expansion Jupiter with death Pluto you know that these this, this is the kind of the time when we expect the peak of the numbers hopefully right hopefully it it will start waning from here I know we've gone on individual levels to great depths within ourselves we've been very uncomfortable even me as an introvert who has been social distancing since 2018 uh you know to me i was like oh this is no big deal like this is just my regular life like my life hasn't changed at all but even for someone like me i'm feeling like oh my god like i would love to just go to a coffee shop and just work or something you know so it is starting to feel very confining for a lot of people and um and yet we're here right we're kind of it's kind of like being on in a layover at an airport like you just got to kind of sit there there's nothing you can do so we have to just really be with ourselves and, and this jupiter pluto is really giving us an opportunity to start understanding right that's one beautiful thing about jupiter is it is this guru understanding kind of energy where we get to understand our own depths and what we are really capable of and our own authenticity, which is really a beautiful thing. Venus has entered into Gemini. She's going to be making her way into a Venus retrograde in May. So as the weeks progress, she'll be moving into her shadow phase. And normally during a shadow phase, that's when the energy is kind of gets, starts to get a little bit wonky and we start noticing things, you know, a little bit of foreshadowing coming out. It's usually when issues start really coming out as well. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some major, you know, Trump versus media, like big blowout kind of thing or something like that. Honestly, would not be surprised if it happened this month or in the months to come. 
Um, but for us as individuals, there's a lot of emphasis on communication within our relationships. There's a lot of emphasis on our own value systems, um, what we really need, those kinds of things. And well, I'm going to do a whole other video about Venus. So we'll talk about it later on and how it will impact you specifically based on your ascendant sign. So we'll get into that. But um, that's something to look forward to. And then tomorrow we have our full moon in Libra. So the Libra full moon comes out. And to be honest, I was reflecting a lot about the full moons in Libra last year, because remember last year and around this time of year, we had two full moons in Libra, which is not super common, right? Doesn't happen all the time. So we had major, major emphasis on love and balance and adjustment and things becoming more peaceful. And that was sort of coupled with a Saturn retrograde, right? Saturn started going retrograde just a little bit after that. And I remember having a discussion, you know, a lot in my monthly readings and in my Instagram posts and my all my things um, talking about how this really was a time for us to make the changes ourselves to do the things that we know we can change to break the patterns break the habits and all of those things because if we don't those things will be broken for us in the future and now here we are a lot of the people who didn't do the work Last summer, you know, we're really getting bombarded with a lot of struggle now. People who did do the work might be coasting a little bit more easily uh, at this time. So either way, it's evening out. And that's what Libra is all about. It's all about the balance of the scales. So wherever there was an imbalance in your life, it's likely getting balanced out as we speak. So a lot of kind of opportunity that can come from this kind of environment and um, I always try to keep the messages as, pos as positive as possible but I know that some people are going through really hard times and you know my heart absolutely goes out to anyone who is you know maybe having some issues with money or jobs or whatever um, but just know that this environment will not be like this forever right we can literally look at the stars and say things are shifting things are moving quite rapidly so you know it, it will be definitely a temporary thing so let's go ahead and get into these cards you guys welcome to this pick a card so we have four piles one two three and four using all aura quartz here go ahead take a moment feel your way through intuitively whichever pile you feel drawn to to take a look at the timestamps will be down in the description box down below all right see you in just a sec okay pile number one let's go ahead and take a look at your cards here six of wands temperance ten of swords the chariot and the three of swords okay so with the swords in the very center and the three of swords at the end i feel like there's too much noise i think it would be a really good idea for you to watch a little less media staying off of social media a little bit more if you guys are all into the conspiracy stuff, step away from that. Because I think you might be missing something if you're spending too much time doing that. I feel like this chariot and the six of wands are really wanting you to tap into your creativity. Now, I know that it's been hard for us to really actually be productive with our creative things. I think that's a, always a recommendation and a suggestion. But when it really comes to it... It can be hard because they're, the vibration of the globe right now is just so out of whack. And for us to really listen to our own voice can be super challenging, especially if you've had something happen. Like if there was, you know, maybe you are going through a difficult time in your romantic relationship. Maybe there is tension at home. Maybe there is tension with your kids. Maybe there's financial tension. You know, someone lost a job, a, a reduction in income, something like that. Like I totally get it. But I know that there's something bigger here, as we see with the chariot and temperance coming out. Um, and I'm not trying to just appease everything and just say, oh, it's going to be okay. Sometimes you really do need to just be like, damn, this super sucks, right? And maybe there's an element of that for some of you that you just need to be like, okay, I accept it. I give up. This sucks. And sometimes positivity can be hard to come by. Totally get it. Totally fair. 
But if you can get out of your head for a minute, allow these 10 swords to just lay to rest, stop thinking about things so much, stop strategizing, stop trying to figure it out, stop trying to do this and that and that and that, you might actually find an inkling of desire creep into your heart that could begin taking your life in an entirely new direction. I feel like your instincts are super important right now. Your receptivity is super important right now. That your angels, as indicated by temperance, are going to be delivering things to you that are very unexpected and things that you probably would never have thought of if it weren't for this environment. So that's it. I don't know. It's just that there's there's something coming and there's a lot of movement. And I know a lot of people have been frustrated with me saying that. But I got to tell you, this is about faith in the unseen right now, the faith in the metaphysical realm. Like that's why you guys are here watching tarot and, you know, psychics and channelers and all of that, because you do have faith in that. And now that faith is really being tested. Like it's great for you to say, you know, okay, yes, I'm faithful. But then when something hard comes, then you have no faith at all. So now is a time when that faith is really being, being tested. So The chariot comes in and it says, don't worry, you are in motion. You are en route to your destination. It is okay. Your destiny cannot escape you, that kind of thing. So just because you can't see things doesn't mean it's not happening. Your instincts right now are going to serve you very well. Six of Wands is an indication that everything is going to be great. There will be success. There will be victory. There will be you know, financial, re- you know, rewards, those, all those kinds of things are kind of engrossed in the essence of the Six of Wands. So it's a beautiful card to get. Okay, and we get this Lizard card. Well, this is a an energy of fire, okay, but there is also a component of earth. Fire, I think, goes with the chariot very well because chariot often communicates to us through our desires. The desire to get up and go, you know, grab some food at the restaurant down the street or the desire to pick up that phone and call that person, the desire to act, to do X, Y, or Z. And sometimes the chariot can get really loud and it can really cause some kind of a fixation for us. And I think in some ways that's a good thing as long as it's, you know, balanced, but um, it helps us get to where we got to go. And the, the lizard is ex- especially extrasensory. And he's regenerative, right? You cut off his tail, it grows back, that kind of thing. So maybe you had to have something cut off so that you can grow a new one, so that you can realize untapped potential here. I think intuitively, instinctually, your kind of lizard brain in there knows something, okay? There's a knowing here because I don't really see a lot of questions with the exception of what everyone else is telling you. The the more messy and the more information you gather right now, the less likely you are to hear the desire creeping up inside of you, okay? So meditation is going to be important for pile one, I think. Okay, the goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creative energy. I give birth to what exists within me. Now, I know that creativity is flowing like crazy, But it's that wherewithal and the ability to focus and sit down and do it that's really hard because the vibration of the world is so intense right now that, man, it can be tough. And some of you are doing great with it. Others of you, maybe not so much. Maybe some of you who are struggling with it are really facing your own self-confidence issues, your own issues with believing in yourself, you know, of of taking a chance? Do you believe that the universe will catch you if you leap? Those kinds of things. And do you really believe in yourself? Like if you decide to do something creative or to go down a new path, do you believe that you can do it? Of course, the answer is you should, but not everyone is really doing that. And, And it's hard when you've been suppressing that for so long there is a creative voice creeping up in us there is a a light that is beginning to turn on and uh, it's important that we give credence to it 
deep replenishment, retreat, rest, and be held. I mean, well, we are in retreat, that's for sure. Um, we are in a place of replenishing. I think a lot of us, this replenishing of energy, because we've been so expending energy in external ways at the office, with kids, with friends, with obligations. And now, like, we don't have that stuff and we honestly don't know what to do. What do we do with this energy? What do we do with this idea? You know, what do we do? And the answer is maybe you don't do anything. Maybe you just let it continuously feed you. Okay? So here we have the last card, which is a change in the wind. Well, that's freaking for sure, right? I mean, I think that's kind of an obvious one, not only as a, a global collective, but for you as an individual. The life is life is changing. Now, I'm kind of reminded when this card came out, I'm kind of reminded of the Saturn retrograde last year. Saturn retrograde in 2019, I remember talking about uh, in all my readings, all my private readings, all my Instagram posts, everything, that this was a time when we had an opportunity to control our own changes. And if we didn't, they would be changed for us. And here we are, a lot of people that didn't, you know, really go deep and didn't, you know, tackle some of the hard stuff. They're being forced to make the changes that they could have, you know, really initiated last year. So either way, whether you did it last year or whether it's happening for you now, the change is happening. The world is growing. You are growing. You are evolving. You are becoming more and more whatever you're meant to be. And you have to flow with it, right? The goddess of all that flows and so beautiful, right? Because that's what we really are being asked to do. We don't have control. And we don't really have, you know, we as individuals, we don't have the capacity to put the brakes on. So we're just going to have to do that for ourselves. And um, there are going to be a lot of amazing things. Whenever the change or the wind changes, there's always new adventures ahead. Okay, so it is a beautiful time. It really is a beautiful time. All right, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Thank you so much. I wish you nothing but the best. Take care. Okay, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. Let's go ahead and see what comes out for you this week. Nine of Cups, Justice, the Sun, beautiful with the orange, the Tower, and the Six of Cups. Okay, so we got three really big major arcana in the very center of the reading. Um, I love the cups on either side, suggesting emotional calmness, suggesting peace, suggesting fulfillment. There is an element of wishes coming true coming through with this pile, which is really, really amazing. And this could just be for the week or it could be in the months to come. You could find things unfolding for you in very unexpected kinds of ways. Um, the tower, of course, suggests sudden change. Now, this could be represent what's happening in the world or it could just represent you know how the world is impacting you if there was a loss of some kind you know that's what the tower can represent it's not necessarily a bad thing though because when the tower comes crashing down then the thing that we have left is an open path we don't have an obstacle anymore we don't have a a rigid mindset, right? An unbreakable or a very arrogant mindset. This is extremely humbling, which is really great. Um, so then we get the sun in the very center. It says, first of all, you're very blessed. And I hope you feel that with the nine of cups and the six of cups. I hope you feel what you're grateful for. And I think gratitude is definitely something that a lot of us you know, we, we can't help but feel grateful for the things that we've got. We can't help but feel grateful for, you know, our particular circumstances um, in, our, in our children and the people that love us and the people that are helping us and whatever. We can't help but be grateful for a lot, a lot of things. Now, the justice is indicating a balancing or an adjustment coming out. And, and maybe you've felt that individually 
where all of a sudden one area of your life just got smacked back and it's all going now into a different department of your life. Maybe you are a more extroverted person, a more social person, so now you are being forced to really experience the other side of the scale. Beautiful thing, right? Because we get to understand not only a different side of ourselves, but now we get to understand people who are quite different from us as well. And that will open up compassion. It will open up, you know, just more acceptance in the world. There is an element of working together here as well. So in the workplace, things, you know, coming coming along, moving forward, collaboration at an all-time high, probably. There might be a lot of productivity, actually, which just could be really great. Um, and the sun, of course, is uh, that the blessings in all areas, the good things in all areas. And there's a, an opportunity for us to really celebrate things in our life. Six of Cups can often be a connection um, with, for some reason, I'm getting a strong sibling component. I don't know why, like brothers and sisters. For those of you who have brothers and sisters, it would be a really good time for you to really connect with them and just do like, you know, FaceTime or Zoom calls or whatever, and just really connect with the people that you care about and, and the people that you, you know, rub elbows with that kind of thing in a more social way. Let's go ahead and see what these cards have to say. Okay, we have a nightingale. Beautiful. I actually love how this bird is like looking up to the light and really singing. And I feel that's a strong, you know, reinforcement of the sun energy. There seems to be a strong focal point for you guys. Like, I don't know, with the sun in the center, a lot of this stuff can't really distract you very much. It just seems like you are focused or maybe fixated on some kind of thing you want to go after or achieve. And that's just where you're headed. I feel a lot of easiness here. We know the nightingale is a, you know, there's a beautiful song that comes with it, song and celebration. And I even see these two people dancing in a field. There's a component of celebratory, you know, it's being celebratory and celebrating the things that you can celebrate and not in a non-selfish way. There's also an element of sending out positive messages. I'm kind of looking at this woman here, sort of looking out over onto the kingdom there and just sending well wishes. I feel like your prayers and your meditations are especially potent this week, where for whatever reason you are resonating at a frequency that is a lot more forceful, that can actually send a lot of healing to people, maybe a specific person or to, you know, your communities or whatever. You know, I've always said that meditation is one of our best acts of service because through doing that, we contribute to the peace, right? Justice. We contribute to the evenness and we contribute to the positivity and goodness of the world. So as much as we would, you know, like to think that meditation is just sitting there for ourselves, there's actually a social component involved with that as well. Okay, so we have Pope Joan, the pontiff of possibilities. The possibilities are limitless because the soul is limitless. Just as the song vibrations uh, sort of leave the, the vocal cords of the nightingale, right? It just goes on and on and on out into the infinite expanse. Um, your soul, like I said, is quite radiant right now. I don't know, that sun in the center is just boom, like smack in the middle of my face there, really capturing my attention. And it's just like, believe, like, please believe in what you've got. Please believe in this illuminate, this illuminated soul of yours, because you seem to be the healers of the world right now. I don't know, like, the world is relying on your energy. The world is relying on your presence and your awareness here. This isn't about work so much. It's not about, you know, the day-to-day the -day kinds of things. It's about your contribution. Possibilities are, en are limitless because the soul is limitless. And when you start envisioning through your meditations the infiniteness of your own existence, you actually can create potent blessings that will be effective, which is really amazing. Ooh, Pleiades. Double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. Well, there you go, right? Channeling and uplifting humanity. That's exactly what I'd like, like the healers. Need I say more? Let's look at the last card. And flexible. Flexible schedules, flexible energy, flexible agendas, flexible goals, fl flexible paths. 
You know, I don't see you guys being locked into anything at all. I see you singing a beautiful song. I see you making a beautiful contribution, period. That's it. And for whatever reason, you are probably the people that a lot of people will be leaning on right now. You're the people that a lot of people are going to be asking for help or just wanting to talk to. I think your positivity radiates and, and you will help lift people up at this time, which is really great. And that's it. Like you're doing your thing. You're in your gig. You're, you're making it happen. And you seem to be fulfilling a divine purpose that you didn't even know was yours. So this is really beautiful. Pile number two. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you all so much. I hope you have an amazing week. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, pile number three. You guys picked the green. Beautiful. Let's see what these cars have to say. Wheel of Fortune, Two of Wands, Death, King of Swords, and Page of Wands. Well, Wheel of Fortune is always the most amazing blessing, and I often see this like the sun energy as well. Um, the sun sort of traversing the zodiac and, and pulling us in new directions for new kinds of blessings. The wheel is definitely turning over for you as an individual, things coming in. I often see a more magnetic energy with the wheel of fortune, like we are pulling things into us, very law of attraction, manifestation kind of stuff. With the two of wands, I know that you have been in kind of a visionary place now, I, you might not see the actual manifestations this month or this week, okay? This is kind of a long-term game that we're all playing right now. And the Two of Wands means to keep your eye on the ball, to keep your eye on the long game, and to remember that that's what's actually happening. Um, Two of Wands is a suggestion to not be afraid to picture the most ideal outcome, right? Don't be afraid to picture something that you've maybe been afraid to really ask for. You have to go big here because when the Wheel of Fortune comes out, it's like it's ready to give. It's ready to let you walk through the gates into a new portal. It's ready for you to enter into a new kind of experience. So you might as well set the ball really high for you, for yourself. Death in the very center of the reading suggests, okay, well, yeah, things are changing. Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. We know that. Not a surprise. Things are evolving. We are rising higher. And, you know, there is a... um a feeling of stagnation when death comes out, but the King of Swords right next to it looks at that and says, I understand what's happening. You know, I understand what's going on. I understand how this has a role in my life. I understand what to do with this. He's never afraid, the King of Swords. He, he has extraordinarily high perspective. And because he's ruled by the element of air, which is a really low density material, right? We have earth, which is very heavy, very dense, and then water, then fire, then air, and then of course the ether. But the, the air is very little friction. And um, he doesn't fight this kind of stuff. He stays elevated during a time of transformation, during a time of change, and during a time of maybe destruction, right? Because he seems to be just watching things just completely de deconstruct, like right in front of him, right? Whether it is your everyday life or whether it is the economy, like whatever it is, completely unaffected. And then we have this page of wands here. Now, I'm kind of seeing two sides with this page of wands. I'm not quite sure how to interpret it, so I'll do it both ways. On one hand, it's you. On one hand, it is you and this two of wands, head held high, excited about the future, ready for a new adventure, ready to go in a new direction. Boom. Okay. But on the other hand, I feel like there's a little bit of a disagreement with you and someone else that this page of wands is someone who is looking in a totally opposite direction. You seem to be looking at this death and, you know, kind of from a, a mountaintop looking down and just saying, it will be over, it will be over. And yet this page of wands, I think, is wanting to express themselves. They're wanting to talk. They're wanting to connect. They're wanting to 
try to do something about it. And that's fine. It's just two totally different ways of really dealing with this death card. And, you know, the Page of Wands is not wrong. You are not wrong. No one is wrong. It's just different. So if there are disagreements here, that's fine. Just let your partner, your friend, your kids, whatever, just let them do what they need to do and let them process in the way that they need to process. And you can do it in your way here. I do feel because the, the air element is actually connected with the heart chakra, which is the green. So I do feel that this is actually your energy right now. It is very mature. And I do think a lot of people might be you know, looking toward you because you seem to be very calm, cool, collected, which is great. And I think that this sort of un unattached view of the death and everything, it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to be beneficial because you're not on a roller coaster, right? A lot of people can get pulled down by such transformation like this and you won't. And it's going to be very even. It's going to be very flat lined, which I think is going to be a good thing ultimately for you because you're still here. It's almost like you're looking past the death card, looking straight into the two of wands and then on toward the wheel of fortune, right? Like I say, long game here for, for, for pile number three. Wolf. Interesting. The wolf is, for some reason, I'm getting a lone wolf quality. I'm not quite sure why, rather than like a wolf pack. But there is an element of instinct here. There is an element of hunting. And maybe that's actually like the two of wands energy is, is really hunting for the future, so to speak. There's an element of wisdom and sort of that ability to really navigate through the circumstances, the way a wolf can navigate through its natural environment, um, the way it can use its mind, its eyes, its ears, and its extrasensory abilities to really sense what's happening there's a sharp intelligence coming through with the swords with the wolf and it is um impenetrable and that's why i don't know that everyone is really on the same page as you i don't know that you are tapping so much into your creativity you might be with the page of wands but i, I do think for a lot of you this could be someone else someone else is probably like oh, let's use this time and let's go on Instagram and let's go take pictures and let's go create this thing. And that's beautiful. It's just very different. And, and I think you are at this time like, okay, great. What kind of world do I want for myself after this is over? Let's start laying down the foundational blocks. The foundational blocks was a theme that I brought up in mostly in my February readings that is now becoming more true and more apparent with every passing day that if you can use this time to lay foundational stepping stones for yourself, that path is going to get built really fast, okay? Now we have Kali. Oh, well, there you go with the death card. Uh, the mother of the universe. I release all that doesn't serve me. It's time to be the truth of who I am. Could not be more true with Jupiter conjunct Pluto at this time. Pluto forces authenticity. Here we have a Plutonic energy as well. It destroys anything that is fake, that is superficial, that isn't real, and it forces us on a path of, of truth. And that's a beautiful thing. And it's nothing to be, you know, taken lightly because now we are able to really speak our truths. We are able to communicate what it is we need to, to, to say. Lemuria, creating heaven on earth, it's happening. Okay. <laughs> Weirdly, like, like, honestly, these cards that are meant to be really symbolic are becoming more and more literal every single day. Creating a heaven on earth, it's happening. And it, I think it is, and, and heaven begins within ourselves, right? Heaven begins with our mindset. It begins with our evenness, with walking the Tao. And it's important for us to be conscious of, of where we're at. And I think you are, which is really great. Whoa, what did I just say? No place like home. These cards are incredibly literal right now. I mean, actually being at home. Um, there is no place like home. It's sort of our nest. We're in kind of an incubator right now. We are in this, you know, period of gestation. And we're, we're, we're growing and evolving. And the cells of our body are changing. And, and we are emerging. 
or we will be emerging as indicated with this wheel of fortune. Okay, so I mean, this is an incredibly beautiful reading. I love where you're at. You are the heaven on earth. You have to remember that your mindset. Um, if you are feeling more creative, if this is more you, that's great. That's beautiful. And if that's your home state, then that's your home state, right? Why not? It's wonderful. So, so yeah, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Thank you so much for everything. I wish you nothing but the best. Have an excellent week. Talk to you soon. Okay, pile number four. Welcome to your reading. Let's go ahead and see what comes out here. Three of Cups, Knight of Wands, Knight of Cups, beautiful, Seven of Wands, and the Hanged Man. Okay, so I feel like there are a couple players in your reading. They could both indicate you, but I don't know. I feel like I love fire and water together. And I know traditionally they're not normally like said to be compatible or, compatible or whatever. But honestly, I love the different flavors that each bring to the table. So this could be a coworker for you. It could be a significant other, a partner, a child, a friend, whatever. And likely you're trying to make something happen together or you are at least talking or brainstorming about things. I feel like there's an element of convening or like really being together, whether it is physically or online. And there's a camaraderie coming through with things. And maybe you are missing the social component a little bit. So maybe it might be good for you to reach out to people that you want to connect with. This might be a really great week to do that. But ultimately, for those of you who do have people in your life that are really around you, it's now a good time to say, how can we work together right now? Look, at this is what I want to do. This is what I'm thinking. This is how I'm feeling. How can I get from point A to point B? And I love the passion and the optimism that the Knight of Wands brings, which is really beautifully mirrored by the Knight of Cups energy as well, which is just as optimistic. But the Knight of Cups brings to it an element of mysticism and creativity as well. And I, I think that there's a lot of potential here kind of ruminating a lot of potential to, to really give birth to something amazing. It could be an actual child for some of you if you are feeling amorous lately. It could be a new business. It could be a new venture. Whatever. I love it. I really, really do love the components coming out. With the Seven of Wands, it does indicate a little bit of pushback, though, and I think that's environmental given our circumstances of where we're at as a global collective, and that's to be expected. But I think if you take this Seven of Wands and this kind of like you know, it's going to be a challenge, that kind of mindset, you're going to actually really enjoy it. Now, the hanged man does indicate a very slow pace, things moving, again, beyond your control. You really don't have a lot of say so. But the thing I like about that is that the knight of wands and the knight of cups don't really care. They kind of have this like, okay, great, it's not really about the money. It's not really about, you know, doing it for self-purpose or for self-reason or anything like that. I just I just want to contribute something beautiful to the world and I don't care if it becomes, you know, famous or I don't be care if it becomes something that everyone cares about, but really it's just more about me utilizing my creative energy. Hanged Man says, it's good that you don't have a lot of expectations right now because things are just a little bit too up in the air. The fewer expectations you can have of things, the better. And the hanged man will see to it that you will understand the place that this collaboration or this kind of creative endeavor has in your future. It's not the end all be all here. Okay, so whatever you're giving birth to right now, whatever ideas are kind of coming out, it's not the end game. So don't play it like it's the end game. Play it like it's merely a stepping stone. That way it takes away all the expectation and then you are more likely to grow and succeed in a different kind of way. So this is going to be fun. I think that you guys are going to find ways to have fun this week. You're going to find ways to, you know, really excite yourself, which will be really good, especially if you're feeling restless. Oh, beautiful. We have the swan energy which um, of course is a very beautiful, elegant kind of animal. And there is an element of elegance and grace coming out. But we also know that swans can be a little, you know, 
they can be dicks sometimes. I don't know if you've ever had experiences with them, but they can be. But I kind of like that edge to everything. It's kind of like a real positive, you know, mixture and positive growth, but there's an edge to it, which makes it cool, which makes it kind of, you know, intriguing and all of that. And the swan is a, you know, kind of just does what it wants. It does what it needs to do. And it doesn't really apologize for anything, which I think is one of the, the beautiful things about these majestic kind of animals is, is they have a sense of majesty and yet they don't really care, which kind of makes them that much more powerful because it's not an ego thing at all. Hanged man is going to see that if any if you go into anything right now with a big fat ego, you're going to be stuck there for a really long time. That's why the humility and just that whole like, let's just do it. Let's see how it is. Let's 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 have some fun. That's going to be the right attitude to really go about doing it. Um, but there's going to be growth here. Right? We all know the story of the, ugly duck, of, the, of the ugly duckling becoming a swan. And that's exactly what happens, right? This is a story of transformation where this idea or this thing that you give birth to will experience some pushback, but ultimately it will transform into a beautiful swan. Okay, I recognize this is the goddess of compassion. I recognize suffering in order to release it. Curiosity breeds compassion. That's exactly what this is. It's curiosity. You know, the more curious we are about things, the more curious we are about maybe people even, the more likely we are to see bits of ourselves in them and bits of them in ourselves. And when we start going through that process, we start to understand them. With understanding comes acceptance and with acceptance comes unity, right? And I think that you are somehow becoming more whole with the collective, becoming more whole with the world. And that is no nothing to really you know shrug at i think that's a really amazing thing that's happening for you and your creativity right now your passion and your optimism right now is serving you in the world very well because it's that optimism of what could be that is that curiosity which is coming out there mirror who or what is triggering you okay Seven of Wands, that pushback, the pushback of things. If this isn't such a beautiful story as what I said, if there's someone kind of coming, you know, you you looking at them and them looking somewhere else, if that's a thing for some of you and that's triggering you, that's something to really pay attention to because there's a reason why that person affects you so much or there's a reason why you want something so much. And uh, I think for a lot of us, when we want something that much, it's an indication of what we know we're capable of, not really so much the having of it, what we know we're capable of, what we know we are able to do with our, you know, with our time and our energy. And sometimes it triggers us because we're, we're not doing it. And therefore we feel like, oh, kind of like that pushback on ourselves. So just be aware of what's really going on. Creativity wise, you know, if you are like really cohesive with someone and you get pushback from the world, it's really just going to tell you what you really care about, right? There's a lot of information going on right now based on our obstacles of what, what's the true flavor? What's the true nature of our, of our being right now? Poise. Oh, I love that with the swan card and the hanged man. There seems to be something about positioning coming out that you might be perfectly positioned for something really freaking cool. And that's awesome. And for those of you who are actually taking steps in one direction, um, that is perfectly poising you. <laughs> so not poisoning, but poising you in exactly the right place that you're going to need to be. And that's something that you're not going to be privy to, right? That information you're not going to be privy to until later on. So it's a matter of faith, making sure that you have faith that you know, you know, faith that you know that where you're going is safe. I just want to point out all the moons that are coming out here. Like in every single card, there's a moon. Even in this, that's kind of like a sun energy, but like definitely this moon really speaking to the intuitive part of this, the creative, the subconscious part of this, and this drive that you might be feeling, it's coming from somewhere. It's coming from some kind of a divine place right now, which is actually really cool. Um, so you're, you're being guided, you're being pushed from, you know, your higher self and your higher or deeper level of knowing. 
um, to get you to where you need to be for 2021, okay? All right, beautiful reading, you guys. I wish you nothing but the best. Have an amazing week, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.